All right. Hi, this is Capri Smith. You are tuned in to the Uncuffed Women's Colloquium. This is our spring virtual edition. We're encouraging you ladies to invite friends. We're counting your shares. So definitely, if you want to be a part of this conversation tonight, we are encouraging it. I'm just making sure that we are live before I get started. started. Um, if, can you guys give me a thumbs up if, if you can see that we're live? Thumbs up. Awesome. So, so tonight we are still amidst the pandemic, but we're going to just take a few moments, an hour to escape from the reality of what we're calling life as we know it. We know situations are temporary. We also know situations come to make us stronger. Tonight we're building our mental muscle. We are releasing those mental handcuffs and we're doing it for the moms, for the women, for the ladies. We are doing it for you guys because we know we're home with the spouses, right? Let's give ourselves a pat on the back. Yay! <laughs> we're home with the kids. Let's give ourselves two pats on the back. Yay! <laughs> and we are home just in our own space. But in all seriousness, we are here today because we recognize the importance of helping each other just check in on our mindsets and making sure we're, we're remembering to continue to build our legacy and to work our businesses. In fact, we discovered by producing this that a lot of women have businesses that they work after their nine to five jobs anyway. So how perfect is it that you get to focus a lot more on your business and build those streams of income and ultimately build your legacy and how, like, what is the gift that we're giving tonight where we're saying, these are things that we've done to help us stay successful, maintain our self-control and just to stay mentally fit in times like the pandemic. This won't be the last emergency you'll face. It probably was not the first. So if you have a message, go ahead and give me an inbox. All right, we always give prizes when we connect. I have an amazing lineup tonight. I have none other than Pam. I'm going to do first names because yes, I have a very personal relationship with all of the guests tonight. So for that, I feel extremely lucky. We have Pam who's going to chime in and just talk to us about, talk to us about some of the things she's had to overcome and endure and how she's managed to stay beautiful the whole time, what she did to keep herself going and how she actually looked like some serious things in the face and said, you know what? I don't have time for you right now. I'll deal with you in a minute. All right. So then we're going to move it on to Keisha. Keisha's going to shut it down for you moms. Now she's coming from a sports mom's perspective, but I'm going to tell you, she's coming from a senior mom having like more than one kid and a single mom's perspective. So she giving us the good good right and she's making that thing look amazing and then we have miss deirdre she is going to tap into ways to build a legacy with a big bold smile she's going to tell us how to maintain the professionalism and the mindset that it takes and how to shift things while all overcoming some very serious issues so you are definitely in the right place hi bishop i'm so glad you're here hey g g saying hi pam <laughs> So you guys are already getting shout outs. I always say there's one superstar at every show. I think we're going to identify who this one is, Pam. <laughs> All right, ladies. So we're going to get right into it. Remember, feel free to ask your questions. Ask the hard questions because we can handle it. All right. So go ahead and we're going to jump right in with our first speaker. And that's none other than Pam. Um, if I don't have the, let me pull the agenda. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes, Pam. So Pam's going to chime in and she's going to speak about ways that she's maintained her normalcy in this time and era. You know, that is such a good question. And a lot of people are complaining about being home and not working and not can't go to the mall, can't shop, can't buy this, can't buy that. 
honestly, I've been in the house for four straight weeks and I feel great. I've not been out the house. And one thing that I figured out is that I'm learning to put me first. After going through, you know, you say people look at me and can't tell what I've been through. You know, I've had a triple heart bypass in the past two years. And one of the biggest things that I've learned from that is that I need to put Pam first. And in doing that, this is the perfect time to put yourself first. This is the perfect time to, you said you never have time to just rest. You got plenty of time now. You say you never have time to clean out a closet. You have time now. You say, always say, I don't have time to write a book or finish a project. You have plenty of time. You have 24 hours to write. I work from well. home. I published it. I have even more time now more time now at home to write and actually i'm working on multiple writing projects because monday i might feel like writing about one subject by the time tuesday come i might feel like writing about something else so i have plenty of time to get it all out of my system i don't have children at home i'm empty and it feels good to have that independence, I was too tired to do. So I'm the girl that says, put all the excuses behind you because you have plenty to do. Secondly, I want to leave a few all is, if somebody compliments you during this time, take it and run with it. For example, if someone says, girl, you got it going on. You are just brilliant. Don't say, I am. No, say, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Accept it. Don't be I'm too many times with a question. <laughs> Why are we questioning what somebody has said or see on you? Take it, run with it. So as a nine to five worker, um, an empty nester, a, mar a newly married woman of eight months and, and an entrepreneur, Woo. take the time to put yourself first while you're home quarantining. My goodness, I told y'all it was going to be a fire fulfilled night. Woo! I can listen to you speak all day long. But Pam, I think the listeners, especially the ones that don't have the privilege of speaking to you, especially since you just blocked us off, you wanted to put two first, right? What did that moment look like when you decided, you know what? My gifts are so important. I need to make myself a priority. What did it look like in someone out there suffering from this? How can they improve on their me time? Well, well, I will say that a lot of times our um, inability to do what we're gifted to do comes from disobedience. Mm. And that's what yields to our illnesses and sicknesses and barriers. So if you what? yield, if you yield, you'll find that it becomes easier to grasp. I'm a firm believer mm. that had I fully enveloped all the things that I was supposed to do, write, radio show, speak to people, encourage people. If I would fully grasp that instead of saying, me, for real? You mean you want, I should be doing that? Or mm. I, nobody's doing that. I'm supposed to do that? No, maybe oh that's God. for Caprice to do and not for Pam to do. I don't, I don't think that's for me. When, all the time I'm questioning it, I could have had it done and not gone through triple heart oh. bypass, diabetes, um, surgery. <laughs> It just would have been done. Now, right. with, with this disobedience, why do women, I will call you type A women, that have all the gifts, everything that another woman will look at you and say, I want to be her when I grow up. Why do we always take our take so much time to shine? Why do we, why is it so difficult to step into the full authority of that? Not just yeah. disobedience. Go, go a little deeper. I think it's fear i think it's fear because although we know we possess those gifts and we know we can do it we're always questioning but why me i can't do that we always have an excuse so fear is always the one thing that stops us even though again there are plenty of people that are saying to you 
girl, you got it going on. You need to step out and do this. You got it going on. You can write this. You can say that. But we're always fearful, like, no, I can't do that. I don't have enough money. I'm mm -hmm. afraid. Um, who's going to listen to me? Excuses and then fear. They always paralyze us at the wrong time. Jeez, always. Now, if you can put in a neat package, I know it took you a lot of years to be Pam, right? But put in a neat package. Three steps that a woman can do right now that's going to save her from some of the lessons that you had to undergo. And, and if you could speak on not so much the pandemic moment, but that biggest transitioning moment, the highest peak of the mountain, what were those three things that said, come on, girl, you're going to keep going and you got this? Number one, me first. Number two, it's okay to allow others to help you. That's not a, that's not a problem. Allow others to step in and help you. That's not that doesn't make you weak. That doesn't make you um you shouldn't be afraid of help. it's um just an assistant get help. And the third thing is choose wisely the things that you want to do. Don't get bombarded by trying to do what everybody else is doing. Do that unique thing that is you. The whole time that I had been trying to figure out my purpose I was in the way of my own purpose because I was busy looking at everybody else and what they were doing and not focusing on self and realizing, Pam, put yourself first, let other people help you and choose wisely that one gift that makes you stand out amongst every, for everybody else. Awesome. Now, one of the things we do before coming on is we have just a, a brief moment with each other, but I wanted to bring Keisha in at the this moment just to see if she had any questions specifically as she's representing the moms for you Pam. Keisha you have the floor. Yes I do have a question so you were speaking from the standpoint of being a wife a worker um, with no kids so what are some of your advice to those that those of us that have kids to incorporate the same things and still feel um, like we've accomplished? You know, that's a good question because I wasn't always an empty nester. And to be honest, I got my bachelor's and my master's degree raising my three children. And now, Ooh. although they are 25, 30, and 19, they were babies when I was attempting to finish goals. So it takes a level of determination and sacrifice. So as a single mother, because I was single again up until I got I'm eight months into a marriage I was raising them by myself and trying to juggle all of those things is all about sacrifice so it's about what you want if you really want it like I always say if you really want to lose weight you'll lose weight if you really want to accomplish a goal you'll do it if it's really what you want to do I agree Let's I have one other question. You spoke that a lot of uh, women don't do things out of fear. Um, could it be also out of insecurity? I think fear and insecurity are so closely related. They cousins. They cousins. Hmm. And no cousins sneak up on people and say, look, little insecure person. I know you scared, so you might as well not do it. And then the little insecure say, you're right. I'm scared. Hmm. But all you need is, I believe in prayer too. I'm going to say that too. I believe in the power of prayer. Amen. And I believe that when you pray and ask God for a thing, he will grant it to you because he said in his word, if you put your trust in me and he'll give you the desires of your heart. So if you Amen. as a praying woman expect it, I'm fearful and then I have some insight insecurity issues can you help me i believe that he will send the right recipe of people or things into your life to help you get through it that's true that's good and you you know pam while i have while you have the floor speak about what it looks like because you're really good good at identifying and building with your tribe you're great at showing up as the leader as the helper you don't, don't need the titles and accolades right what does that look right. like? Because I believe that narcissism is real in today's society. 
and people confuse narcissism with business. You know, they're not getting any money in the bank, but they'll a selfie every day that's not leading to any money in the bank, right? So right. you speak about, because you show up, and I think it really that can show up in any form. She doesn't have to be on the billboard, right? Tell women what that has meant to your path and how it's helped you get to where you are. And please be sure to tell us where you can get your books too. Okay. You know, one thing I believe is that serve, serve it. I believe that that's so it's for you to meet people while you're serving up at anybody's brochures or anything because I believe that that is the open door to you meeting and being around good people that you may not necessarily have met in other methods. Um, That's good. Serving and being open to to new ideas may help you, but I say don't be afraid of the service. Okay, don't be afraid of the service. And then lastly, you asked about how to find us. So the, one of them find me on my website, and my website is pammints.com, and I'll put it on the live for people to, to visit. Awesome. Now, I'm not sure if it was on my end, but there was a lot of feedback, and I don't want them to miss any of your juicy nuggets. So just, just to recap the last things you just said, the three three takeaways and then how to find you. Okay, I'm sorry. The three the three takeaways about service or the three takeaways, period? Uh, uh, you can do both. You have time to do both. Okay. The three takeaways was me first, allow others to help me, and choose wisely. Perfect. Um, and make sure that you're not trying to be always the superstar in the room. Service mm-hmm. will get you further sometimes than being the superstar. That was so good. I'm so glad you repeated that. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and how- you can find me by way of my website at pammints.com. That's good. Now, uh, one more nugget. You have you've never been shy about what god is in your life and you've never been you've never hesitated to say he comes for me right and he's been a great part of your story so a lot of people are upon their knees bent nowadays and a lot like, like every knee is going to bow it doesn't matter when they do it but they're finding themselves bending and praying to our father now which i think is great but what is your favorite biblical scripture what is your bible verse what is what are the words that God has given you that has become your life's mantra? This mantra is Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Trust in the Lord within in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. That scripture again gets for the back through. row. Again for the back row. Again for the back row. <laughs> Come on now. They need to hear it. Say it again because I don't want to miss it. Proverbs 3 5 6, the book of wisdom out of the Bible, says, Trust in the Lord with all hmm. thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he. He alone shall direct your path. Oh my God, it was so good. Okay, I'm going to keep this thing going. But you know, if it were just you and I, then we would be talking church for about 20 more minutes. You know that, right? Maybe two more hours. <laughs> but let's keep focused on Let's keep focused on what we're doing here. This is the Women's Uncuffed Virtual Spring Intensive. The importance of it is, is to remind us that women are doing it still. And that's the message of today. Women are doing it still. What it was important for us to do is to show you guys that it doesn't take a pandemic. It doesn't take a triple, quadruple heart pass. Triple, was it triple heart triple, bypass? Triple heart bypass. Triple heart bypass. Triple heart bypass. Triple heart bypass to stop us and make us say, Father, where are you? I'm here. Use me. And the key things that I took away from Pam's session 
was that she's always ready and always has been ready to show up and serve with everything in her being, knowing that it's always going to be her time to shine. She doesn't need man to do that for her. Secondly, she's always trusted God. She's always trusted God. And thankfully, she knows in putting herself first is the priority. We can't do anything without putting ourselves first. That's right after God. That's important. So round of applause to you, honey. We're going to keep it going because I know this dialogue is going to get real hot. I'm bringing in Keisha next, and she's going to talk about the importance of taking care of business as a sports mom. Now, the distinction um, or the thing I want you to think about when Keisha is presenting is to think about if you don't have a child, if you don't have someone that's in sports, what is representing the sport kid in your life? That, that thing that takes up a lot of time, requires a lot of attention, and you have to show up 1,000% and is totally relying on you. So as Keisha is speaking, think about what it looks like for that muscle to be so strong that she's able to do all the things that she does. Welcome, Keisha. How are you? I am great. How are you? Great. Go ahead and introduce yourself and jump right on in. Okay. Hello. I am Lakeisha Major, the owner of Journey to Greatness, where I inspire individuals not to just survive, but to thrive in every area of your life. And how can you be a sports mom and teach your kids to thrive? What Thrive stands for trust the process, highlight all wins, receive guidance, invest in yourself, vacate negativity, and evaluate your goals. So even when you're at home during this pandemic where we can't go anywhere, this is a good time to communicate with your kids. Um, as Caprice has said, it's just not about your sports kids, but whatever activity that your kids are in, you want to be able to communicate with them because we don't want to live dreams based on what we think that they want. We want to know exactly what they want. So we're able to push them to what they want um, to where they want to be. So I'm a sports mom. I have a senior that's a football player. I have my daughter is in the sixth grade. She's in dance and cheer and I'm always on the go. And so a lot of times moms, you know, we're not into sports. We do all the other things. Um, but it's a different bond when you're able to connect with your kids with whatever their interests are. And so you want to take this time to sit down with them, find out what it is that they want to do. What level do they want to go? If they're in Little League, is it just something that they like to do now? How far do they want to go in whatever sport or activity that they're in? So you can help cultivate their dreams because we all know that a house built on a rock will stand. And so if you're a solid rock in your kid's life, you can help them stand with whatever adversity, good, bad, and different that comes into their lives. And so in that mm -hmm. communication piece, you know, okay, the academics that they need to carry, you know, um, the SAT scores and ACT. ACT scores that they need to get to, because if you know how far that they want to go, you can start with them researching what major do you want to be in, um, do you want to take part in, so then we can start looking at these schools that you want to go to and the requirements that they're requiring you to have to attend these schools, because it's all good to have a good a dream of, I want to do this and I want to do that, but if you don't have the academics to back it up, then you can only go so far are in it. And it also teaches them what they need to do as a, an adult, where they need to go mm -hmm. and taking responsibility and ownership of where that they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the communication, you begin to learn this activity or this um, sport that they're in, you want to become their number one fan. There's a difference between mm -hmm. a number one cheerleader and a number one fan. And the difference number is... One. A cheerleader will cheer for their team no matter what the score is. If it's 50 to zero or zero to five, 50, they're still going to say the same cheers. We're number one. We're, you know, we're the best and all of those things because that is what they're programmed to do. But a number mm -hmm. one fan, they still show up at the game, but they're in the stands. They're going to cheer you on when you're good, doing good. They're going to let you know when they're doing bad. You don't want to be that parent that is always praising your kid for everything that they do. And so when somebody says something wrong to them, they don't know how to accept it. The, the wrong should come from you first so you can teach them how to accept negative um, criticism 
from other people because we need both positive and negative criticism to move on in our lives. And so when you come when on, sis, come that on now. you are their rock that they can depend on you, that you are gonna stand up for them. And I always give this example and people think that I'm crazy, but my son was on the field one day and it was after the game and he was complaining that he couldn't get off his block. And so I said, well, if you got your weight up, you will be able to get off your block. And everybody thought that that was harsh, but no, it's the reality because it's not that they were holding you, it's that the other opponent was stronger than you. So you can either point the Mm. finger or you can let them look at the fingers that are pointing back at them and how they can get better, not making excuses for what they have done. And so when you be, when you've learned their craft and you know what's going on, you're able to teach them and talk to them and guide them so that they can thrive in what they're doing and not just skating by. And Ooh, so that's good. that is the the bulk of what you want to do in communicating and learning what they are doing. So and when you know that, like. Um, I'll go back to, you can help them with their academics. You can help them with their SAT and ACT score to get to that point that they want to become. You're now their number one fan. So they know that in any situation that you're going to have their back and you're going to let them know and you're going to let other people know how to talk to them and how they should talk to other people. And so there are five Mm -hmm. things that um a person should have an athlete or whatever endeavor that they're in it, five points to a star my son is number five his favorite that's his number and so i believe in oh, the number good. five everything is number five so he's a number he's a star to me and to a lot of people he may not be a five star athlete according to the rankings but his number was five so at, the first thing you have to teach them is at the top of the star is God and their faith Mm -hmm. and who to stand on in good, bad, and indifferent because it's because of God that they got to where they are and because of God that they will get to where they are going. And so on the arms of the star, because the star goes out, the arms of the star, one end of it is your child, is them, Mm is their efforts, is what they do that will get them to where they want because we can want all that we want for them, but if they're not willing to be disciplined and put in the work ethic that they need, they're not going to get it off our wishes. The other point is you, you are their their support system. That's where your communication comes in. That's where your shoulder comes in. That's where you are the loudest one out there, whether they hear you or not. They know that you are supporting them and their dreams, not the dream that you want them to have, but the dream that they want to have. And you are implanting in them the guidance that they need, the support that they need to move on. And Mm -hmm. also on the other end, you are number one, but other friends and family, because we all know it takes a village to raise our kids. We can't raise it alone. It's others that are around us that are, um, others that are around us that help us raise their kids. So that goes into one of the bottom legs, which is their coaches, um, their teachers, their mentors, and those are the ones that can give them guidance in that area. They have a specialty in whatever area that they want. My son does football and track. So his coaches mentor him and guide him in the recruitment process and the plays that he needs to do, whatever he needs to do in that sport. The coaches play a key role in getting him into the next level. So that's one leg. And then the other leg is they're trainers. So every sport, every activity, everything that they do, they should have a separate trainer that helps them. So if they're in sports, they need a speed and agility trainer that will help them get the movement and the speed, the strength that they need. They also need a position trainer. This person Mm -hmm. focuses focuses on the position that they're at. It's not a broad thing. It's what they are doing to help them be the best that they can be. And this is something that many people don't talk about. They think that you just show up and you practice and you're a star. No, there's a lot of background information that goes into it. It's like us parents as we go to work. You just don't sign up for a job and you do that job for 20 years and think that you're going to be an expert. You have to take train right. continuous training. You have to get mentored by 
identify your, you know, your boss or whoever. So think about these same things for your kids and start implanting the importance now so they know how to handle it when they get older. And so the other thing is a position trainer, a speed trainer, um, and also a re re rehab trainer. So I call it a rehab oh, wow. trainer, okay. but what it is, is somebody that helps them take care of their body. So whether, you know, mm -hmm. I take my son for stretches and massages, there's chirotherapy, there's all kinds of things because we put so much pressure on our bodies, but what are we doing to relieve them? Us as adults, we go get massages, we go, you know, take walks, we, we make sure we know when our body is tired and we make sure that we do things to help our body. You have to do the same thing for your children so that their bodies are still young as they're getting older. And so those are the things that you wanna start looking at researching. If it's a money issue, then find somebody that's willing to work with them. You can talk to their coaches and say, hey, do you mind staying a little bit later to work with my child? He's, you know, he needs to improve in this area. When my child got injured, I didn't have a lot of money. So I had to become his physical therapist. You know, I had to massage him. I had to stretch him. I had to do all of these things. And he knew in those times that I was invested in him. But also in those times, you build a bond with them. So you can talk to them about different issues in life. You can relate them, whether they're playing the piano, if that's their interest, you can relate any life situation to whatever their interest is, and they will take hold of it a lot better than we just talking in open air about what's going on. So that's what I have for you. Be looking out. I have a webinar that I'm going to be building that will break down each of these areas into depth that I'm working on now. So. Awesome. I love it. I love the five points you've given to me so much good stuff. Now, the parallels between the symbolism between every woman and what you've done with your son is you have placed God first. That's the resounding message. What I want you to tap into, though, is you talk about it comes off like I'm straight, I'm focused and I've given this to my kids. Where does that come from? And how does a woman develop it if she's a little confused and frustrated right now? Well, I came from a strong line of women, <laughs> so okay. it, was it was implanted in me, but also it came from trials and tribulations. Going through the storm will teach you a different level of yourself. You, you dig deep when you've gone through some things and you have to pull out a strength that you would never believe at times. You didn't know that was there, but you needed to get through it. And I've seen not only that, my, my experiences, but I've seen different people's experiences. Um, and so I take those things in and I examine them and then I try to help somebody else out. You can't save somebody from their problems, but you can give them an open, balanced mind to deal with them. That's good. Now, another thing is would you, by you focusing on your son and teaching him the things to focus on to make him a better athlete don't you think that that has a big like that's a big success strategy if more people focus on themselves and focus on the things that they were good at and gifted to do and develop those gifts we'd have a much better world could you talk about that yes i do believe that because as um pan was talking and we were talking about fears and insecurities when you are the deep rooted in your faith, you have a strong foundation. That doesn't mean you don't question some things sometimes. That doesn't mean that you don't have any fear, but it helps push you through to get to the other side or to get to your goals um, that you're trying to do. Um, so yeah, it's definitely faith uh, plays a big part. Do you have like a game time ritual or mindset shifting that like if he's having a bad day, but he has to show up, what do you tell him to do that we can do? Well, when he was having um, his junior year, when he was having a rough time, I would always give him five points. And so I let him know um, to believe in yourself, to trust yourself, to have fun with whatever you're doing. Don't take it on so serious like I have to be the best. Trust your abilities because you're out there 
because you have the ability to do it. Sometimes we, we have what's in us, but we second guess it. And it's in the second guessing that causes the delay, causes the fear, causes you to mess up. So I typically give him a pep talk. I'm like, you're, you're a leader out there. Put the, um, put the team on your shoulders. We usually, I usually play a song and we, you know, we get hyped up. Um, this year he was a senior, so he just tuned me out. He put his headphones on and tuned me out. But I have been doing, yes, I have been doing it since he was five years old, the same thing. So this year he's like, I got it, mom. I know. And I'm like, okay. So this year I really just gave him the fist bump and I was like, you already know what to do. Go out there and do it. But it had been planted in him for 12 years now. So it was wow. a foundation that he, he could always pull on. Perfect. So we're going to post your handles all in the page. They know how to follow you. Deidre, Pam, you guys have any feedback or questions for, for Keisha? I, I feel like I'm, I'll I go ahead. Go ahead. One. I have one. So, you know, did you decide because you had, did you, he was your, he was your son. He, you had a boy first. Mm -hmm. So did you decide because as a mom, you know, women with boys that's kind of hard i had two boys myself and a daughter but the girl came first so did you decide to put him in sports early or was that an interest of his and so that's how you carried it on so we come from a sports family so he was around sports all the time but when he was two he would watch the whole game like a whole nfl game he's rolling around on the floor doing what they were doing in school, the teachers would call me. They're like, he's not paying attention. He's playing with the crowns or the um, eraser tops on the table. And I'm like, okay, did he answer the question that you gave him? And they said, yes. I said, he's playing football. He's bored. So he's moving the thing around. <laughs> so it's been in him since he was really small. And I didn't ever have to. The That's only good. thing I made him do and try was track. I gave him some other opportunities he's played by basketball he loves basketball but other sports i asked him and he was adamant about no so i didn't put them in them but yeah it's been since he was coming out the belly <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good and yeah. you know what else i love that keisha said she talked about no no trophy no participation trophy look do the work then you get the accolades you don't just get a high five so if we could speak to because we're talking about women in business and I alluded to it earlier, but how are we defining what we call business now and this business attitude? Social media will have us thinking everybody's rich, but everybody's not. <laughs> so how are we really legitimizing, <laughs> how are we legitimizing who we even consider to the leader? I, how, can you speak about that? I guess the better way to ask the question is how is your son and yourself established as the leader in any arena. How have you done that? Well, both me and my son are very laid back. Um, the only time you really hear us is when football is on. <laughs> <laughs> we are very mellow. So um, I've been trying to get my son to be more of a vocal leader mm -hmm. because people just seem to do what we say to do or what we're doing by leading by example, because of our attitude, okay. because of mm -hmm. the things that are coming out of our mouth, it's not um, controversial or questionable, but they see the results. And so I had to step back and say, even if you don't say anything out of your mouth, you can still be a leader by what you say, okay. by what you do and your actions. So don't feel like you have to come out of character and be the most vocal person. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. watch, when you start doing stuff and you'll see him like point and tell them to do stuff and then they start doing it. And I was like, you see things start coming together. And he was like, yes. So go within your ability and just lead um, by what you do. That's good. That's good. And you guys are all women uncuffed. Again, you are here at the Women's Uncuffed Spring Virtual Intensive. Basically, we're bringing the conference right to your living room because we're all on timeout because somebody out there did not listen when the governor said stay home the first time. So no, we're now on timeout. This is an example of us continuing to build our businesses and keeping it going. Keisha, bravo. We're going to go ahead and shift it right to Deidre. Deidre, I'm bringing you in. 
on the cusp of knowing anything could be a business. We could, like they have masked business that did not exist two weeks ago, two days ago. Everybody's making certified masks now. Have you noticed? Yes. So it doesn't take much for us to establish a business. However, I want you to speak about what the dangers are when you step into too much too soon and you haven't released some past things. Like you still have a lingering hurt. You still have a lingering overcast of some sort because I know that you are very careful about what you do and you're very methodical. I want you to tell our ladies why it's sometimes a good idea to slow down and think about the steps that are gonna happen. You have the floor, honey. Thank you. So um, I am Deirdre Webb and I call myself the mother to be of Web of Life coaching and consulting because this baby Ooh. is about to be birthed. Mm. Yes, this baby is about to be birthed. And um, Caprice, I have to say, I am so grateful for the divine interventions that let me be here with you today to talk about the importance of releasing the past hurts that keep us from trusting ourselves and stepping into our purpose. Because while on the outside, during the time we've known each other, I've seemed methodical. A lot mm. of that pulling back has really been the result of not releasing past hurts. So um, I come with the perspective that uh, we all have at least three things in common. Number one, we have a story that began the day we were conceived. And from that mm. point on, who we are today has been shaped by family decisions, our personal experiences and decisions, and the consequences connected to all of the above. And it doesn't really matter whose story is worse or whose story was easier because yeah. the second thing that we have in common is that every element of our story prior to this very moment is in the past. And there's mm. not one thing we can do to change any part of it. Wow. Not, wow. Yeah, so not the great experiences that we look back on and smile about or the hard experiences that some of us don't even want to think about. All of those experiences create messages in our subconscious mind. And here's why it's so important to release the hurt. Because hurtful experiences create warnings that are intended to keep us safe. And I'm going to date myself. There was a show um, back when I was younger and it was um, Lost in Space. And Will Robinson had a robot. And the robot would set off an alarm and say, danger, Will Robinson, danger. And his arms would flail. And that was <clears throat> over. So that was his warning signal. And over our lifetimes, we developed these messages in area after area of our lives where we've experienced hurt. Hmm. So um, let me just give a quick example. A nine-year-old gets bullied in school for being smart. And with the capacity that a nine-year-old has, they tell themselves, if I stop shining, the bullies will leave me alone and I'll be safe. Hmm. They do wow. that and the bullies leave them alone. So now their subconscious mind tells them it's not safe to shine. Right. And that nine-year-old message is still hard at work today trying to keep that adult safe when the adult is ready to step out and try new things 
like building a business. Mm -hmm. And while the message is coming from a place of love and protection, it's now keeping the adult stuck in a place of fear and creating the explanations and justifications that we give ourselves and others as to why we can't do the things we're called to do. Mm, and so, yeah, so like for me, even though I've always known that God has been protecting me, that he kept my heart from being hardened as I was going through experiences, because of fear, I was telling God why I couldn't step into what I knew was his purpose for me. Wow. And at the end of the day, they're all just excuses. Mm. So moving forward depends on doing the work of assuring that nine-year-old bodyguard that you don't still need to be protected from the bullies. Mm -hmm. um, and for most of my life, my decisions were ruled by a multitude of warning messages, even though mm. I knew in my heart and had living proof that they were not my truth. Ooh. And the reality for a lot of people is that in the past, those messages have served them and maybe mm. even kept them safe. So mm -hmm. even though where they are is not the place where they want to be, the comfort mm -hmm. of the known feels safer than the fear of even the wonderful possibilities of the unknown. Wow. And that brings me to the third and most important thing that we all have in common. So um, each one of us has the power to make at least one new decision that if we're committed to doing the work can change the direction of the next chapter of our story starting today. And my journey has been about doing the work and giving myself permission to change what I believed about me and releasing not just that nine-year-old bodyguard, but the mm. and 11 and 12 and 18 and 21-year-old too, with the realization that releasing them doesn't make them just go away. Right. It just lets them know that they don't get to make the decision anymore. Okay, how did you make that transition? The listeners need to hear how to make that transition. It really is about, well, first of all, um, I started with the great life coach. Hey. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. hey. hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also um, finding um, outlets, finding opportunities. This work for me has happened over a number of years. I um, went through, I enrolled in and went through a local women's program that was called the Center for Remarkable Women. And through that process, I found out that um, I had a voice. Okay. And going through that process, uh, let me start to do the work of speaking up for myself. And then recently working through and essentially coaching myself mm -hmm. through one message at a time. I like that. You chunked it. You dissect that thing and sliced it and broke it down. Now, Deidre, for the listeners, because your boundaries are so clear now, your life is so different than when, it, when you were holding on to the hurt. For the woman out there saying, I hear you, but talk to her and tell her the one thing that has to happen today, because she may not be in a position to do the three things you said. What's the first step she needs to take? The first step to take today is to find that one thing, that one decision 
that you can commit to. And it doesn't have to be a great, big, huge change, but make one new decision. And once you decide what that thing is going to be, write it out. One thing that I like to ask folks to do is to envision yourself a year out from having made that decision and having done the work to claim that decision. What does your life look like? How are you living and who are you? And then mm -hmm. come back and look at um, breaking down that decision into steps and identifying who in your life can come alongside of you and help you to be accountable for taking each of those baby steps. It's like you, the saying, how do you eat an elephant? You do it one, one step at a time, one at a time. Step at a time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So All right, Keisha. To start the process. Okay, Keisha, you had some questions for Deidre, right? Um, yeah, it's maybe not a question, but kind of tying uh -huh. into what you were saying um, about taking one step at a time, it goes into the R and the I and thrive, receiving guidance and investing in yourself. You said over a period of time, you did things for yourself to get through each process. So you had to invest in yourself, whether it was read a book or seek guidance, going to, mm -hmm. you got a coach, um, mm -hmm. investing yourself to take each piece, um, piece by piece to get um, get through that process. So what happens if a lady says, you know, I tried that, you know, I tried to um, focus on one thing and I just wa wasn't able to. What do you say to that lady to help her to keep motivated, to keep going? The first thing I say to her is that's okay. Um, and help her because in light of the situations and experiences that we've had, it's understandable that there will be stops and starts. You'll fall and you'll have to pick yourself back up again. So it's okay that it didn't work. It's okay that you fell. Let's get back up. How can we help you get back up? And maybe you tried to bite off too big a chunk so let's go back and find a smaller chunk. People think they have to, that you haven't been successful unless you've achieved this great big thing. But how about we just take one little piece and celebrate doing that? How about we just celebrate you got back up off the floor and said it didn't yeah. work? How about recognizing the courage that it took to say, you know what, I tried that and it didn't work, I failed at that. Well, that's okay. That's because good. every time we fail, gives us an opportunity to learn a new lesson and fail forward. That's true. Exactly. That's true. And how are you gonna know what didn't work unless you fail anyway? So Pam, exactly. I know you have some- This is what didn't work. Insight on this. Come along, why don't you come back to life? <laughs> <laughs> have you met me? Go ahead, Pam. I'm sorry, I missed your question. Did you have a comment or question for Deidre? Yeah, I do have a question. So I will say this as a compliment to you, your voice is very calming. So I know that that is a good attribute when you're talking to someone to motivate them. You have a calming spirit that uh, I'm sure will make them say, oh, really? <laughs> because it, I was Nurse mesmerized Frank. for a moment. I was mesmerized. <laughs> I must tell you. <laughs> Oh my God, you're so funny. That was like you. And Caprice knows, so Caprice knows this. Let me tell you, girl, that's that aspiring voiceover artist. See, that's all those things that those little protective voices say, girl, you can't do that. Nobody's going to pay you to talk. So yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I love it. Thank you. That's good. But what should we look for? How, how can we connect with you if they're listening? Yes, so... Um, my website is not up yet, but, um, I can be reached via email. My email is web, my last name, W E B B it's web of life coaching at gmail.com. 
That's good. We're looking for big things. Yeah. Yes. And I'm just going to be that irritating little voice in your ear until it happens. Yes, they are coming. And what I'd like to awesome. Do, um, what I like to do today is if um, folks want to email me um, as the business launches, I will be offering um, three free three people a free 30 minute information session to see if awesome. it's something that they'd be interested in. Perfect. And post it in the page. So everyone, I'm going to share this, guys. We're going to post it on YouTube. You'll have plenty of ways to go back and watch it. Believe it or not, we are just shy of five minutes of closing down. Before I give each beautiful speaker an opportunity to give us one takeaway, I want to pop in with four things I want you to hear me say and then you do today. The first thing is that you have to honor who you are. You are. Don't try to be anybody else. I don't care what that looks like. Honor who you are. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to really think about, think about what did God tell you to do? Because he's not going to reward you to the extent that he wants to until you do what he wants you to do. What is the purpose, your God-centered purpose over your life? He meant for me to be a Baltimore daughter that shows up and disrupts the whole room. I'm supposed to change a thought, to change a pattern, to hopefully change an action, to build a legacy. Why? Because there are too many people like us out there waiting, screaming for their seat at the table. We're going to keep nailing, building, nailing, hammering, and building. The next thing I want you to do is make sure you connect with your tribe and don't be the only one winning. Make room for everybody. Everybody. It doesn't matter who they are. Make room for them. And then the last thing I want you to do is to remember to uncuff daily. How do you do that? It's quite easy. You join us on the Uncuffed Women's Colloquium Virtual Spring Intensive. Keisha, one word. And she smiled. <laughs> one word. I am so focused on what you're saying right now. I'm like, one word? How can I come off one word from all of that? <laughs> One, my one word my will always improve be, their lives. Exactly. My one word will always be to thrive. Thrive, thrive, thrive in all you do. Love, love, love it. Deidre, you have the floor. One word. Um, trust. Oh, I love you, Deidre. Trust yourself. Yeah. Because there's more to you than you can even imagine. Wow. I just want to give you a hug right now, but I know it's against all the laws, so I'm just going to give you a virtual one. Love you, girl. <laughs> Damn. It is all on you. So my word is strength, and it is because you are strong enough. What? Ooh, yeah. Say it again. I meant, like, say it again. <laughs> strength. You are strong enough for the people in the back. <laughs> all right <laughs> i love these ladies i love you guys tune in every week too. until we get all punished but i mean until you guys go back to work because this is my job i'm always looking forward to uh, ways to connect with my tribe there's so many ways to be down with us please go to our page and like and love and follow all of the speakers until next time you guys be blessed bye, bye. <laughs> oh, i love that Pam. oh my god i love it Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye.